if you're watching this video, the odds that you like rare plants are really high, but the odds that you overpaid for one of them during the pandemic are almost 100%. At least I know that that was the case with me. Hey everyone, Pablo from Aerod Vibes Only, and in this video, I just want you guys to sort of like come along with me on a tale as to old as time, which is when you dream of having a good deal, a deal that sounds like it's good, too good to be true, and then it actually turns out that it was too good to be true. I remember 2021, I was just sitting in my couch, scrolling through Instagram and Facebook, and these people were posting the most incredible plants that I have never seen in my entire life. So of course you would go to the Facebook marketplace and there would be someone selling like the one note of the low variegation pink princess for like $200 and you would buy it and then you would rot it. And eventually you would just like give up on it, right? So it's, I did that for a couple years and I got mostly like Nepenthes and carnivorous plants. But then in 2023, like in the fall, I ended up going to Palm Street. Palm Street is this online um, like store, an app. People do like live sales and they have a lot of different availability for different plants and, you know, different things. But mostly what I was really, really surprised about it is that they had a lot of tissue culture. And not only do they have tissue culture, but they had plants that I was only dreaming of like three years before for like $20. So of course I went completely insane and I started just purchasing a bunch of plants everywhere. But even then, there were some that were like super pricey, like the variegated ones, like some of the yellow cassias, some of the like, uh, you know, variegated Billy ATAs and stuff like that was still like pricey, even in TC. So I told myself, I was like, all right, let's not purchase the super pricey ones because we don't want to like spend a lot of money and then kill it and just have like a really, really sour experience for the whole thing. Let's like be smart about it. So first I bought some of the basic ones that they sell you like the five pack in, in one bag. They call it like reverted or like gamble packs, but honestly it's just like just green plants, not the variegated versions. And it's a pack of five. Usually it'll be like $20. So those are ideal if you ever wanna like start practicing your tissue culture, just get yourself one of those because if you kill it, it's not that pricey. And then you get five of them to sort of figure out what works out for you. So I did that at first. I got a bunch of five packs of different plants that I was kind of like looking forward to, kind of like the um, the white knight and stuff like that. And I did so well with them. I literally ended up just multiplying them. And I was like, damn, tissue culture is like hella easy, right? I was like, I've been slipping on this. So I was like, you know what? I think we're ready to like level up to the next level. Like we are going to now do maybe some more rare plants, but I still don't want to pay too much like money for them. So let me get some contaminated plants. So Contaminated tissue culture is basically whenever you purchase something that is cheaper because it has like mold or has like bacteria or it just needs to be the flask ASAP. And many times the sellers just don't have like that's not part of their business model. So they'll just sell it like super cheap. So I started purchasing this really rare like variegated alocasias and some variegated philodendrons that were coming in this um, kind of contaminated tissue culture because I thought, listen, if I kill them, it is what it is. I'm at least learning. And if I actually keep them alive, then I made a, a, a great deal. I pay a little bit of money. I had a really good learning lesson and now I have a rare plant. So I did that with a bunch of alocasia that were in um, like the very good versions ones. And I did so well with them. I was so excited. I was so like, I was like, listen, tissue culture is 10 out of 10. It's so easy. I am just like, everybody should do be doing this. Everybody should be like, you know, loving it. So I decided I am finally ready. You know, I'm ready to finally go and purchase the big, big boy um, uh, tissue culture. You know, I'm ready to actually spend money on a non-contaminated, variegated tissue culture because it's it's been so easy, right? Like it's been so easy with the other plants. Why would a more expensive plant be different? Is, is what I asked myself. Um, and I said, probably nothing. And I purchased them. So clearly uh, by the video that we're making, uh, the lesson was not the same. Turns out that those plants had a very, 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 very different learning curve that I did not experience to any of the others. So I do not want the same thing to happen to you. So that is what this video is all about. So if you want an entire like breakdown history of all my purchases from Palm Street, like the tissue culture, how much I paid for them and kind of like what happened to them, 
I made a video a few months back, um, basically reviewing Palm Street, and I just went down my entire like purchase history one by one, disclosing how much I paid for it and everything. So you can definitely check that out. Um, but this video is just basically focusing on like the highlights of what I've learned, and also just on a few uh, purchases that went horribly wrong. So along this video, I'm going to be jumping back in time with me from a few months back basically showing some of the uh, plans that I no longer have. And then um, I'm just going to be keeping you updated. So the first thing that you should know about transitioning your tissue culture plants is that you need to have a high humidity dome with it. So tissue culture plants come in a baggie and they're basically growing in a hundred percent uh, humidity. So whenever you take them out, they're going to go through a shock. Not only is it a shock because now they need to grow roots and they're in a different environment, but also the humidity changes a lot. So the most important thing, and you're going to see a lot of the sellers sell like kits with it, you just need to buy a container that has a lid. Um, and then that is going to basically allow for the entire humidity to stay in. I usually tape it the top of it. And that is the first lesson. If you're going to get some tissue culture plants, make sure you have a way of putting a dome on it or at least keeping it in a high, high uh, humidity in the first few days. So the first plant I want to highlight is my Caramel Marvel. Um, basically, I purchased it when it looked kind of something like this. Um, it came in a jar and I was really, really excited for it. I paid $95. So I was really nervous because that was my first expensive tissue culture plant. So I put it on the top shelf of my IKEA cabinet and I just left it inside the container because I was like, okay, you basically just need to let it acclimate. I'm just going to wait for it to start putting out some new growth and then I'm going to like take it out of it. So I did that, but then I, I noticed that the plant was kind of green. Like the last leaf was just completely green. And I was like, okay, maybe I'm just like hallucinating that um, is maybe just, I'm just, I don't know. I'm just assuming that it hasn't burned in. So I waited, I waited, I waited, and then it got even greener. And I was like, oh, no, I, like this is not <laughs> ideal for it. So the second leaf became green and I was like starting to literally get itchy. And I was like, when is it too late? Like, can I still take it out? What's going to happen? So when the third leaf became green, I was like, no, 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 no. This is like code red. So I took it out, I chopped it. And then you can see the footage here of that plant. Basically, I just grabbed the top of this tiny micro tissue culture plant and put it on the side. And I just prayed to all of the tissue culture gods that it basically allowed the side shoots. So um, aeroids will have like a way of growing new plants if they get caught off with auxiliary nodes and stuff like that. So uh, the philodendrons basically activate other uh, of those nodes. And sometimes some of them are going to have more variegation because the variegation is um, through the stem. So basically, I was just hoping that one of the auxiliary nodes would come out with a lot of variegation. And what happened was that um, five came out, I think, and they were just non-variegated. It was the first one did not have it. The second one did not have it. The third one had like the tiniest of variegations. And I was like, okay, I need like a whole prayer. So I'm going to show you what that looked like um, a few months back with me from the past and also showing you how big the top like original cut got and how little the rest is. And then after that, I'm going to tell you what that plant looks like right now and chop it. And this is what that top became. So originally this is basically a Pluto is what I consider it to be now. Um, and yeah, if I would have left this plant by itself, right, if I would have just kept my tissue culture plant, let it grow, it would be this. It would have just reverted and there would have been no hope. Whenever I showed this plant a few months back, you saw that it was kind of like tipping over because it didn't have enough of the roots kind of holding onto it. So this is what it looks like now. It has kept the variegation. And honestly, I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. Some of my favorite things about this plant is that whenever you have a new leaf like coming out, you basically see it uh, completely golden door. I don't know what color this is, like a golden orange, uh, copper, you know, kind of caramel color. Um, and then eventually it burns into that beautiful green. So this is what eventually happened to that plant. I don't have any of the Plutos or, you know, the non-variegated top cut. Um, I gave them away for free and I think I swapped the other one in one of the swaps. Um, Plutos are beautiful plants, but I don't think most people want them. <laughs> um, most people are just interested in the actual caramel marble. So sometimes it got a little difficult to uh, get rid of those plants. Oh yes, the tragedy of not learning my own mistakes. So yeah, I purchased the Caramel Marvel. It reverted. I went through that entire rigmarole to make sure that I got a variegated version by chopping and chopping and chopping. 
and then I bought it again and I did it again. That was that was just like that was just bad luck, I guess. Um, I don't know. Tell me down below, did you get a similar experience? Because I might feel like I'm not alone in this one, at least with this plants. So with the Billy ATA, basically I ended up with four plants. I still have them and I'm going to show you what they should be looking like right now, but it don't. And then I'm going to show you what those two variegated. Oh yeah, I said two. That's right. One of them variegated turned into two variegated. And now I have two of those variegated versions. But let me show you what the non-variegated ones are looking like right now. So this one is going to be the first. And yeah, you, here you can see very clearly how Billy Etier goes from having this really, really cute, almost like a heart shape um, leaf. And then it begins to like elongate um, how it should. So this is actually one of like the smaller shoots um, that I had. And this is what it looks like um, now what the second uh, of those shoots is looking like. Again, it doesn't have any variegation. Um, and part of me kept them because I was kind of hoping that maybe along the way, like sometimes out of the blue, the variegation comes back. Um, but so far, none of them have it. So mm, maybe, I don't know. Have you guys had ever had a, a non-variegated version that reverted, like come back alive after? Um, I haven't yet, but I've heard like rumors of that. And then this is the last offshoot of my Billy ATA that did absolutely nothing. So this is the big top um, one that I have. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's actually starting to finally change. A couple of weeks back, I repotted it into the pond because I wanted it to be in semi-hydro. I did not want to have to go through like non aerate and then back into semi-hydro. I was like, Billy ATAs are pretty like resilient. So I'm just going to throw it into the pond because most of its roots were already kind of like water roots. And it just took to it and it's doing fantastic. And um, I can't wait to what this plant is going to look like. I think it's going to turn into a monster. Um, absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, I cannot wait to make some videos with Billy ATA. Um, because so far my experience has been very limited because I just keep cutting it and just hoping that a variegated version grows. And here you can see what is looking like the other shoot. So basically from the original stem or, you know, I guess the original stalk um, that I kept cutting down, one of them also became variegated, but it's down here. And the reason I did not put it in its own container is because it had that leaf that is completely yellow. And then the next one was like 80% yellow. So I'm just a little afraid that I'm just going to like just kill this plant because it does not have enough chlorophyll. So I left it in the stock and I'm thinking I'm just going to chop it once that um, root that is coming out gets a little longer. And then I don't know, hopefully this stock just produces a new brand new plant. Like it is possible sometimes they do that like because it's fully rooted and it's still alive. So as long as it has some kind of tissue left, um, it might produce a new variegated plant. And that is some of the interesting things that happens with tissue culture is the plant wants to live. And as long as some of those cells are kicking, um, you might end up with like a new plant. The other one is going to be high or stable light conditions. If you get a high variegated plant, it's going to need more light because it does not have enough green to survive. So if you don't give it enough light, that is just like a doom for it. So make sure your light is not hot. They don't like heat. They like slight warmth, but they just want intense kind of light until they begin to size up more than that. So stable light conditions, super important. Don't put them outside. Don't leave them in the sun. Don't do anything like that. It's a tiny little delicate baby. Just because a plant starts small does not mean it does not grow humongous. This is my same uh, philodendron Jose Buono that I got from a tissue culture last year. I want to say it's been like 11, 12 months. And oh man, it got huge. I gave it a moss pole uh, to it because, you know, it's a it's a climbing plant and um, it needs a, an extension. And that's my issue with moss poles. Like they just need an extension way too often. And I just did not do it. And now it's like sending really, really long roots. Um, I would not sleep on its possibility of sizing up. Don't forget that uh, the goal is to get them to be healthy and thriving. And that means that it might get big. So always be careful on what plant you get um, whenever you're buying tissue cultures to make sure you have the room for it. And the last one is going to be if they revert, chop it. If they revert, chop it and activate those nodes while it's small. If you wait too long for your plant to go, my rule is three leaves that are green and we're chopping that in. So make sure that you keep a track of how many that happened, cut it, don't be afraid. Most plants want to survive. So either the base will survive or the top, but you might as well just give it a shot. So this is everything that I've learned with tissue culture. I have some more videos. I have a whole playlist. If you want to keep learning more, I have a whole tutorial on how I do the contaminated ones. 
So just know that tissue culture is the future. Tissue culture is how you could be getting some rare plants and it's not difficult at all. Just give it a shot um, and I'm here to help you. YouTube thinks that this video is the best for you.